guys, today we are going to be talking about Exodus chapter 26. We're still continuing the discussion of the building of the tabernacle, and I'm entitling this discussion, God, the Interior Designer. All right, but before we get into that, I'm coming to you live from the spot. Welcome to Yem's World. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section and share the video. And if you have subscribed, make sure you turn on that notification bell so you are alerted as soon as we post another video. All right, guys, let's get into it. Okay, so today we're looking, I got my Bible with me. I always got my Bible with me. We are talking about Exodus chapter 26. And I'm actually just going to read the first verse to you. I'm coming to you live from the King James Version. That is the Bible that I have in print. I do reference other versions uh, a lot, but this is the one that I have printed out. So I'm just going to read to you first one. Moreover, Thou shalt make a tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work. Thou shalt make them. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but if you haven't already, make sure you read Exodus chapter 26 and you can pause and go read it right now. OK, so. If you, uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I read this, I was surprised. I was like, wait, hold on. God picks out colors? What? Blue? Scarlet? Purple? What? Now, we know that these colors are associated with royalty and kingship. And um, I suspect that God is actually the one who set that standard and then kings now, uh, you know, over time sort of took that over. And now we associate those things with, uh, you know, royalty and all that. But it was actually God's, uh, you know, instruction or God's framework that kind of set that precedent. So I was surprised to see that. But what's, what stuck out to me was that again, you know, God is very detail oriented. He's into the colors. He's into uh, the specifics of, you know, how we do life. So the colors that we wear, right? The colors that we wear to work and the colors that we wear to church and what we wear to the store. Like it's very um, specific. And I believe that he must have had his reasoning for why he chose those specific colors. Uh, but I was surprised to see that. Um, the next several verses kind of talk about these curtains, right? And so these curtains, these uh, it's five curtains that are coupled together and another five, and then they are all joined together. It goes into very specific detail about um, how those curtains should be made, what should be on the curtains. Of course, I already talked about the colors. Uh, and then there should be these loops and then these rings that are going to go through the loops and the rings are uh, rings of silver and brass and gold and and all that. There's all of that in there um, and very specific. And so God, you know, he they, they're building up this tabernacle. Right. So in Exodus 25, we learned about. Uh, like the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat and the lampstand and the table, all those things were, um, you know, the instruction for building them were given at that time. So those, those are like, you know, the different furnitures that were going to go into this tabernacle. Now in 26, we're looking at the actual frames, you know, and the, the, the sort of the, um, the outer parts of this tabernacle that were, are going to be built. And we have these curtains that are going to um, sort of line this tabernacle. And of course, they, they're all specified in terms of dimensions of the actual curtains and, uh, and the boards and all these things um, are being specified in terms of how to actually create this tabernacle. And th there's this, you know, this blueprint for how to create this tabernacle. And um, you know, as, as, you know, when I, as I read this, it really made me think about how I set up my house, right? Like, okay, 
what colors should I be using? Um, how should, you know, what dimensions should things be? And where should I arrange things? It talks a little bit um, later on about where things actually go, right? So I'm just, um, it says the, um, God specifies the location of the furniture, right? And where things are actually supposed to be placed. So the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat um, are going into what is called the most holy place or, or the holy of holies. And um, those things are, those particular items are very important items. And so they're placed in the most holy place. We learn later on that not everybody has access to the most holy pl place, right? Just the pre the high priest. Um, and then, and then there's the, just the holy place, uh, where other things, the altar and other things are, are placed. And so, you know, there's a specific distinction and the separation between, um, what goes where. And I, I, you know, as I read this, I just thought about my house. I'm like, okay, so what should I have in my bedroom versus what I have in my living room versus what I have even to decorate the outer uh, portion of my house? It, you know, in the curtains that were created, he said, you know, have one, have the curtains hanging over. Um, so I think it was like, uh, animal skin that kind of made up the curtains along with this fine twine linen. And, um, so they would build the actual curtains. And then there was this sort of overhanging or this over, uh, lying curtain that would go on top of that. And so very like specific, very. And so we, we don't just, you don't just, um, you don't just do things anyhow, right? This is God's tabernacle this is the place where he's going to meet with them and he's specifying this is what this is how I want it to be set up I want it to be set up with these colors and I want this to be placed here and that to be placed there and you know this place is the most holy place so only certain things go there and of course the things that were the most holy those were the very best of the materials so everything that was in the most holy place was gold, right? Overlaid with gold. And then when we come out of the most holy place, we had silver and then brass, you know, but, you know, so the most prized things are in the most holy place, which is where the priest goes into, um, the high priest goes into and goes to literally meet with God. And so, you know, and also it kind of gave me insight as to, um, like in our home, there should be a place that we, a dedicated place that we meet with God, right? And that place is to be adorned and decorated in a very specific way. Um, it shouldn't just be one random room that's just empty or, you know, um, I mean, unless that's what God is saying, but it should be, you know, these things should be highly thought about and highly, um, you know, even directed by the Holy Spirit, you know, in, in our day and age, we should be listening for how God wants us to set these kinds of things up. And so as I, you know, I read through this chapter, I mean, every, it was very detailed in terms of the um, measurements and, and the, the specific materials that were used for this item and specific materials that are used for that item. And that's why I would encourage you to read it if you haven't already very, very detailed. In fact, I had to read this chapter like five times or maybe more just to kind of wrap my head around what was all, what all was happening in here. But I just love that, that, that God didn't leave anything up to chance. I love that he was, uh, not, he didn't, he, you know, we all have this creative abilities, you know, and, um, we have this creative licenses, but then he gave a blueprint of how he wanted things to be set up and how he wanted them to go. And he did not leave. There was no stone that was unturned and there was nothing specific, um, that, that wasn't like detailed out. 
So he, he uh, made sure that all of those things were listed out, the colors, the materials, all these things, all these important things, where this is to be placed. This goes here, that goes there. Um, and, and it really encouraged me specifically for my house, but also, you know, um, in our churches also, right? So how, how do we, how do we adorn our churches? This is a place where God is meeting with us. It's got to be the best of the best. It's got to be the best of the best. This is where God is coming to meet with us. And I know there's discussions. I remember I had a discussion with someone, um, who said, you know, they didn't, they didn't want the, the, the church to be, uh, a place where, people felt so comfortable that they didn't go out, right? Because the ministry is really, it's not necessarily in the church, right? It's how, what are we doing outside? And that was the point that that he was making. And, you know, at that time, I I, 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 I definitely understood where he was coming from. So he said he he wasn't making anything too comfortable. Like he wanted people to to receive and then go out. And and I, and I, I definitely hear what he's saying. But then when I looked at this, I'm like, hold on. God wanted the best. Okay. Don't go half on, you know, how, you know, on the churches and all these things, you know, don't make it a place that is not conducive for God to, to flow and to work. God is a King, right? So it's supposed to be a royally adorned and, and highly elegantly decorated because that is that's the framework that's the precedent that he set in building this in this tabernacle and that was the instruction that he gave to Moses and he said follow this pattern follow this pattern do not deviate from this pattern that I'm giving to you and I believe that he must have had an idea in his head maybe over tabernacle that was in heaven we'll get to that later but um I believe that he had uh, you know, this idea in this head. And so he's, he gave this, you know, framework for everyone to, to, or for Moses and the people to follow as they were going to, uh, build this tabernacle. And so I just, you know, want us to think about that, right? So to be very intentional about how we organize things, right? How we, how our, homes are organized, how our lives are organized, you know, what kinds of materials are we using? What kinds of colors are we using? What kinds of things are we using? Where do we place what? There probably maybe I need to go back and look at my room, my bedroom and see, okay, you know, this is, um, Mm, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be here, right? And and just to kind of do an, an inventory and take an inventory of what is supposed to be where. And of course, listen to the Holy Spirit for that guidance, right? God is the one that was talking to him. So we also need to listen to the God through the whole through listen to God through the Holy Spirit to get instruction about how to set up our lives and how to set up our things and, and even, even in our cars, right? One particular thing that stuck out to me as I read through the chapter also was the fact that in the most holy place, that is where we're told the Ark of the Covenant went. And the Ark of the Covenant is what houses the law, right? God's law and the mercy seat. So, in the most holy place, which is where the Lord meets with the high priest, is his law and his mercy. And that was just so encouraging to me because his law and his mercy go hand in hand in the most holy place. So in the very most holy place that we have access to God, we have access to both his law and his mercy. So we need, yes, obedience is key. Obedience is God really values obedience and disobedience. There are severe consequences for disobedience, but then he's not so rigid. He's not so rigid. He understands um, who we are in our humanity and he extends mercy in the same place where his law exists right? And he expects total obedience. And yet he has, 
you know, he, he, he gives mercy in the same place where his law exists in the most holy place. And that was just really, really, um, a, an eye opener for me that, um, you know, in that most holy place, I have access to his mercy. Yes. I'm expected to be 100% obedient. Right. And that's, that's the expectation. You know, that's righteousness is, is obedience, right. And holiness. And yet, um, there's mercy, there's mercy, right? So it says, come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, right? And so uh, that was just something that, that really ministered to me through this chapter. Um, and so I, I just uh, was so blessed by, by this uh, chapter. And I was just so blessed that God is really into this kind of things. He's an interior designer, right? So if you're looking for inspiration, yeah, you can go to Pinterest. Yeah, you can go to YouTube. Yeah, but you can also go to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will guide and direct you in that area of your life. And so um, I am and just encouraged and 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 I want us to continue to have this discussion because I think it's a great discussion. Um, but that's it, guys. That's all I had. Once again, like I said, if you have if is this chapter spoke to you in any way um, and you had some other ideas, other things that came to your mind, definitely leave a comment. I am really, really interested. This particular topic is just so fascinating to me. So I, I am like eating it all up. So if you um, read through this and you got some uh, additional, you know, thoughts and things like that, definitely leave a comment in the comment section. Like the video and um, subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section and share the video. All right, guys. See ya.